Postman Pat, Postman Pat, and his black and white. Early one morning, Jess arrived just in time to be let in with the milk. Hello, Jess. Just in time for breakfast. Julian was waiting for the milk, and Pat wanted a little drop in his tea. But Sarah didn't forget Jess. Time to be getting a move on, said Pat. I wonder what sort of day it's going to be. Let's see what the old barometer says. Oh dear, just look at that. It's pointing to snow. Now then, let's have a look at the sky. <laughs> Not a cloud. Pat tapped the barometer just to make sure. That's what I thought it said. Snow. Great. Snow? You mark my words, said Pat. We'll have snow today. I've never known my barometer to get it wrong. Snow, said Sarah again. Never in this world. There's not a cloud in the sky. Snow, said Julian. I don't mind. We're going on a nature walk this afternoon. It'll be more fun with a bit of snow. I'd better take some extra sandwiches, just in case. We'd better tell Mr Pringle. It might not happen, said Sarah. Now off you go, you'll be late. It was cold outside, even though the sun was shining. Pat hurried along to the post office. Ted Glenn had his scarf on, a sure sign that winter was on the way. Morning, Pat. Morning, Ted. Morning, Mrs Goggins. Brrr, by gum, it's cold today. Morning, Pat. The post is none too hot either. I reckon it's going to get colder. My barometer was pointing to snow this morning. Snow? Oh, dearie me, not already. Surely not snow. Such a nice sunny day. Now, what was George saying when he popped in with the eggs? He had the radio on in his van. I'm sure they said it was going to be cold but dry today. Not a word about snow. These folks on the radio, what do they know about the weather in Greendale? Now then, my old barometer, I've never known it to be wrong. Jess had found something to play with. Pat and Mrs Goggins were too busy to notice what had happened to the string. Now, that's for the village. I'll just tie it. Oh, now where's that string? It was here a minute ago. Um, is this it? Well, I think it is, but what's happened to my nice, neat ball of string? That cat can sense when snow's on the way. Come on, Jess. It looks as if a whirlwind's been at it, never mind snow. Him and his cat. Pat was on his way. Morning, Miss Hubbard. Have you got your snowshoes ready? Snowshoes? Whatever are you talking about, Pat? We'll not be seeing snow this side of Christmas. Oh, don't be so sure. My old barometer... Oh, poo to your barometer. I go by the TV. Well, mind how you go. There was a parcel for Dr Gilbertson. Ready for the snow, Doctor, said Pat. Plenty of plasters and cough mixture, eh? Snow, said Dr Gilbertson. What's all this about snow, Pat? It's a lovely sunny day and I always have a good stock of medicine to hand. You never know when you need it. My old barometer says it's going to snow today. Oh, Pat, I'd rather go by the Met Office. More scientific. They have computers, you know. Anyway, look at the sky, you and your barometer. I don't suppose it's the snow that chewed the corner of this parcel. Oh, well, um, it's when the weather's on the turn. Catch, you know. Very sensitive. It's not too badly chewed, is it? Urgent letters. Gotta be off. Cheerio, Doctor.
Morning, Bat. Lovely day. Morning, Alf. Have you got your stores in? Stores, Pat? What stores? Winter stores. In case you get cut off in the snow. But there isn't any snow, Pat. Not a flake. The man in the paper said it was set fine for two weeks. Oh, thanks, Pat. <laughs> That's not what my barometer says this morning. <laughs> now, where has that cat got to? I saw something streak across the yard. It's not like your Jess to do that. Jess! Jess! What are you doing up there, Jess? Hello, Pat. Hello, Dorothy. Now, hasn't your Jess been stuck up enough trees in his time? When will he learn? He knows things we don't know. Come on, Jess. Well, he's got a funny way of showing it. Pat was on his way again. Next stop was Granny Dryden's. Morning! Morning, Pat. Lovely day for the time of year. Unseasonal, I'd say. Mind you, it was never like this when I was a girl. Come November, the snow would be coming down like feathers. We were cut off for weeks. We couldn't get to school, you know. You mark my words. We'll have snow today. Well, mind how you go. Bye. Bye, Pat. I don't know, Jess. Nobody seems to believe in my old barometer anymore. I'm not sure I do. But they can't say I didn't warn them. Eee, nothing like a spot of woodwork. Hmm. Better take this end off. Morning, Ted. Hello, Pat. Ted, you've not let your stove go out, have you? I was just looking forward to a good warm-up. <laughs> I'm too busy to bother with it, said Ted. Besides, it's like a spring day today. You get warm doing a bit of sawing and that. I'd get it going now if I were you. There's a real cold snap on the way. If you'd seen my barometer this morning, I've never known it to be wrong. Nay, Pat, that's old-fashioned stuff. It's best if you leave that sort of thing to the experts. I listen to the radio. Hmm. I don't know about all these new-fangled knick-knacks. Give me my grand's barometer any time. Hello, Pat. Hello, Sam. <laughs> Pat arrived at the village school, just as Mr Pringle was setting out with the children. Morning, Mr Pringle. I hope you're not going far. There's snow on the way, you know. We well, don't worry, Pat. We'll be as safe as the letters in your bag. You know what the scouts say. Be prepared. Besides, here's the Pencaster Gazette local weather report. Set fair to the weekend. Well, you couldn't ask better than that. That's not what my barometer says. It says snow. We well, I promise we'll be really careful. We'll just go up the teeniest hill, no further than Birkhow Barn at the most. Well, mind how you go.
Uh, makes you wonder, Jess. There again, I could be wrong. Morning, Pat. Morning, Reverend. Doing a spot of sweeping up the leaves? Well, no, Pat. It's this sand. Makes such a mess, gets everywhere. There was I thinking there was snow on the way. Then, bless us all, the wind turned, and out came the sun. The good Lord smiles upon us at mysterious times. I do hope you're right, Reverend. I'd best be on my way. Cheerio! Hmm, it certainly is a mystery. You never know. Mind, that wind's getting up. And here come the clouds. Hello, Pat. Afternoon, Mrs. Pottage. There's a parcel for you today. Thanks, Pat. I'd best not open it. I promised to meet the twins on their way back from... Oh, Pat, look! Snow at last, my dear old barometer was right after all. We'd both best be on our way before it gets really bad. And there's the ancient oak and the willow. And when the cold weather comes, the little creatures will begin the long winter sleep. I wouldn't mind staying in bed for the winter, said Tom. Mr Pringle. And over in the meadow, the swift hare. Remember to put that in your nature diaries. Mr. Pringle, look. And here we see the last of the dog roses. Oh, please, Mr. Pringle. It started to... Over there, that's bracket fungus. Don't touch it. It's deadly poisonous. I'm cold. And there, the rooks. Flying from tree to tree. Swooping and... Oops! Ow! My foot. Ouch, it hurts. Oh... Oh, Mr. Pringle, are you all right? It's, um, it's getting a bit snowy and cold. Can we go home, please? Oh, ouch. Well, yes, that would be a good idea. A very good idea. But I don't think I can walk, children. Dad's barometer was right after all. Oh, I wish he was here with his van to take us home. George! George! Where are you? He can't have gone far in this weather. Is that you, George? I've got a letter for you. Thanks, Pat. Put it in the basket, will you? Now then, look at this. Those little marks in the snow. Tracks. Well, it's not Jess. He hates the snow. I reckon it's a fox after my prize ends. Best lock them up safely, said Pat. Cheerio. Bye, Pat. deeper by the minute, and the road was slippery. Ooh. Oh dear. Coming downhill, Pat slid backwards into a field. Oh dear. Luckily, the oh gate no. was open. At last, Pat reached the village. He stopped outside the school to collect young Julian. Ah, 
Hello. Where is everybody? Oh, Pat, said Sarah. The children aren't back yet. They must be lost in the snow with Mr Pringle. You were right about the snow, Pat. Your old barometer beats my radio. I wish it had been wrong and the children were back safely. Now then, said Mrs Pottage, they'll be all right with Mr Pringle. Yon snow's getting awful deep. They should be back by now. It's getting dark, said Ted. Well, the snow's stopped at least. Something must have happened to them. Now, I remember Mr. Pringle said they were going as far as Birkhow Bone. They might have taken shelter there, said Ted. I wonder if I could get through with my van. You'll only get stuck. I'll tell you what. Why don't we have a go with my lorry? It's bigger and heavier. We'd have a chance. There's a barn over there, Mr. Pringle. We could go in and shelter. We'd be warmer out of the wind. Well, that's an excellent idea, young Julian. We're getting slower and slower in this snow. Come on, children. <laughs> ah, great! Bill's found a light. Now, children, let's settle down. I don't like sitting in the dark. There's plenty of straw. Nice and cosy. What do we do now? Ah, that's better. Nothing much. Ouch! My foot. I don't like the dark. Now for the emergency supplies. Hot cocoa and biscuits. Any idea where we are, Ted? Well, I've seen that tree somewhere before. But everything looks different in all this snow. Then, they get stuck in a snowdrift. Oh, that's done it. Come on, Pat. We'll have to dig ourselves out. You dig your side, Pat. I'll dig mine. Mm. Oh. Bike. Mm. Won't take long. Oh, hot work this. Ah. E. That should do it. Let's give her a try. Sounds bad, said Pat. It's now but a bit of wet got onto the plugs, I bet, said Ted. It'll be all right when I get it dried out. I'm sure I know this lane, said Pat. I'll just have a look. <laughs> Not that I'm going to see much in the dark.
Hmm, better be getting back. What's that? It sounds like... Oh! Oh! It sounds like singing. Ted! Ted! There's somebody over there, singing. I heard them. Clear as clear. What do you want about Pat singing? How can there be? Listen. You're right. Let's get a move on, said Ted. So, here you are. Wait, it's Pat and Ted. Hooray! 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 Come on, you lot. That's enough singing. We'd better get you home. Take it easy, Mr. Pringle. Take it easy. Like a hand, Mr. Pringle. Easy as you go now. Watch that foot. Thank you, Ted. Last one. Up you go. Okay, Ted. Be praised. Here they come. I hope they're all right. Katie and Tom, I'm so glad you're safe. What about the others now? What a story young Julian had to tell Sarah. It was great fun, really it was. It's a bad sprain. You will soon be fine with a bit of rest. Well done, Pat and Ted. That was magnificent. But I know one thing. Next time I want to know what the weather's going to do, I'll ask Pat what his barometer has to say before I do anything else. Here, here. Me too. Champion, said Ted. Proper champion. Postman, postman Pat, can you guess what's in his bag? Is there a letter? Thanks a lot, Pat. Thanks, Mrs. Goggins. Wake up, Jess. Time for work. Oh, he's a sleepy boy this morning. Off we go, Jess. See you later, Mrs. Goggins. Bye, Pat. It's the school choir, Jess. Morning, Pat. Morning, Dr. Gilbertson. The children are in good voice today. Pity the Pottage twins won't be there to join in. Are Katie and Tom poorly, then? They've both got a nasty bout of chicken pox. Poor things. Let's hope nobody else gets it. Morning, everybody. I could hear your choir singing from down in the village, Mr. Pringle. Thanks, Pat. 
They've all been working very hard, learning our new song. <gasps> Mr Pickle, Mr Pickle! Lucy's covered in spots! Uh, spots? <gasps> Mr Pickle, Mr Pickle! So is Bill Thompson! Huh? It looks like a case of Black River Fever to me! <gasps> Of course it's not Black River Fever, Sarah. It's probably chicken pox. Dr Gilbertson just told me that Tom and Katie Pottage have got it. Chicken pox is highly contagious. I think I should send the children home immediately. Hooray! I'll phone your parents and tell them to collect you right away. Morning, Mrs Goggins. Morning, Pat. Oh, thank goodness you haven't caught chicken pox. It's all over the village. Really? Oh, aye. The poor vicar's got it, and Jeff, and Charlie Pringle, and so has little Lucy Selby. Yes, Julian's come down with it now. He was pretty miserable when I left this morning. He said his chicken pox spots were itchy. Oh, that reminds me. Ajay's just phoned to say that the calamine lotion has arrived from Pencaster. Could you pick it up and drop it off at Dr Gilbertson's, please? Certainly, Mrs Goggins. It's very good for itchy spots. <laughs> Everybody in Greendale will be wanting a bottle. Come on, Jess. Looks like we've got lots to do today. <laughs> Oh, there you go, Pat. That'll be the last of the calamine lotion. Thanks, Ajay. Could you let Dr Gilbertson know that mare has got chicken pox? <laughs> Are her spots itchy too? Yes, and she's got a bad cold. Tell her we said get well soon. Meow. I will. Bye, Pat. Meow. Bye, Jess. Bye, Ajay. Meow. Oh, dear, Sarah. You've got it as well. Morning, Pat. Yes, she woke up this morning covered in spots. <sighs> Poor you. Here's the calamine lotion you ordered, Dr Gilbertson. Oh, thanks, Pat. I should deliver them right away, but I really need to keep an eye on Sarah. Would you mind dropping them off for me? No problem, Doctor. Ah, the vicar will need a bottle, and Jeff Pringle and Charlie. Oh, and Bill Thompson, too. And Mira. Ajay says she's very itchy. Oh, dear. Yes, she'd better have one. Could you also take a packet of salt to the vicar for me? No problem. The vicar's my next call. Why does the vicar want salt? To gargle with. Gargle? With salt? You mix it with water. It's very good for sore throats. Can you gargle, Sarah? I'm a brilliant gargler. <laughs> Goodness me. But you have to be careful not to swallow it or you'll be sick. That's enough, Sarah. Thanks, Pat. Tell everybody to rub calabard lotion onto their spots and gargle with salt water if they've got a sore throat. <laughs> I'll be sure to pass on your good advice, Dr Sarah. There's the vicar's letter and a parcel and a bottle of calamine lotion from the doctor. Meow. What is it, Jess? Ah, the salt. <laughs> Clever lad. Thank you very much. Morning, Reverend. How are you feeling? <coughs> Terrible, Pat. Well, these should help you. Calamine lotion and salt from the doctor. God bless her. How kind. <coughs> Can't stop, Reverend. I've got to call in and see Jeff and Charlie Pringle. They're poorly too. Oh, Pat, <coughs> would you give them something from me? Uh, certainly, Reverend. 
A gardening magazine for Jeff and a comic to cheer up little Charlie. <laughs> oh, and I have a message from Sarah Gilbertson. Don't forget to gargle. I won't, Pat. <coughs> <coughs> That's from the doctor. And the Reverend sent this. Oh. How to grow sweet peas? Ooh. Whoops. <laughs> I've got it wrong. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, Zap Zero, my hero. That's more like it. Jess has got a much better memory than me. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, you two. Drink lots of water, and Sarah Gilbertson says, don't forget to gargle. How you feeling, Bill? Bored. I want to play football. Oh, you won't be doing that for a few more days, love. Thanks for the calamine lotion, Pat. We really need it. I've got one more bottle to drop off at Mira's. Oh, could you give Nisha something from me, please? Of course, Dorothy. It's a hot water bottle to keep Mira warm while she's got a cold. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, Jess. It's not real. Oh, by the way, Bill, Sarah Gilbertson says don't forget to gargle. That's just what the... Jess! Oh, thanks for reminding me, Jess. I nearly forgot. Dorothy Thompson sent this to keep you warm, Mira. Thank you, Pat. You're very welcome. <sighs> You look worn out. It's been a very busy day. <coughs> and I've got a bit of a sore throat. You should go home and gargle, Pat. That's exactly what Sarah Gilbertson says. Don't forget to gargle. <laughs> Soon be home now, Jess. <coughs> oh. <laughs> Sounds like they've all taken Sarah Gilbertson's good advice. <coughs> Hi, Dad. Hi, Julian. How are you feeling? Much better. I'm glad to hear it. <sighs> oh, my goodness, Pat. You've got chicken pox. <coughs> <coughs> Dad, Mrs. Goggins said you've got to drink lots of her black currant cordial and rub calamine lotion onto your itchy spots. Thank you. You're a very good doctor. Come on, Julian, you mustn't be late for school. You looking forward to seeing all your friends again? Oh, yeah. Bye, Dad. See you later, love. Bye. <coughs> Hello, Julian. Are you all better? I'm fine, but now my dad's got chicken pox. He's really fed up. Poor Pat. He worked so hard taking care of us all while we were ill. He brought me a comic. 
And he bought me a hot water bottle. And he bought me a bottle of cum... 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 lotion. He made us all feel better. But Mr Prinkle, Mr Prinkle, I know. Why don't we do something for Pat? Yeah! yeah! Oh, dear Jess. It's a bit lonely here on our own. <laughs> what on earth? In Greendale, if you're under the weather, there's someone you're glad to see. He brings help to you and me. Everybody, three pictures for postman. Let's say hey, 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 hooray. We're glad you are here today. Thank you. I needed that. Thirsty work being a postman on a day like this. Now then, these are for the station cafe, and there's Dr Gilbertson's magazine to deliver. Right you are, Mrs Goggins. Are you going to the picnic this afternoon? At Ted Glenn's? I hope so, if I get this lot delivered in time. Good luck, Pat. Cheerio. Off we go, Jess. Here's the post, Nisha. Thank you, Pat. Have you got much more to deliver? Quite a lot. Poor Jess. <clears throat> it's too hot for him. Mmm, they look good. Pat, they're for the picnic at Ted Glenn's this afternoon. Come on, then, Jess. The sooner we get these letters delivered, the sooner we'll be able to find a nice shady spot and relax at the picnic. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're on your own today, Pat. Ah, well. Cheerio. Pat! Before you go, could you take this over to Dead Glen? He phoned this morning asking for sugar. What does he want all that for? He's built an ice cream making machine. He's promised all the children ice cream this afternoon. Ice cream? Hmm, that sounds good. No problem. Ted's house is next on my round. That's it. Now then, let's put some mixture in and give it a test run. Now then, where's the lead? What's he doing? It's an ice cream maker. He's going to make us all ice cream. I love ice cream. What's your favourite flavour? I like chocolate. I like blackcurrant. Do you think it's ready yet? This should work. Just plug it in and switch. Oh! <laughs> oh. <laughs> you all right, Mr Glenn? Hi, lad. Um, now to worry about. Be up and running in no time. Looks like we're going to have to wait a bit longer for the ice cream. Come on, let's go and see what other things we can find to put in it. Good idea. Hmm. Electric's gone. Now what am I going to use to power it? Fight! Ah! Ooh. Ooh. Just the bloke I was hoping to see. Hello, Ted. Here's your sugar. How's the ice cream going? I've had a spot of bother with the electric. I reckon you can help. Of course. What do you want me to do? I fused the lights in the house so my power supply's broken. I thought we could use your van to power the ice cream maker. Well, I don't know. 
I've got to finish my deliveries. It won't take long. Oh, all right, then. Here you are. Thanks, Mrs Thompson. These will make great ice cream. Who's got ice cream? Ted Glenn's built an ice cream maker. We're collecting things to put in it for the picnic this afternoon. I know what's good in ice cream. Cherries. Reverend Timms has got a cherry tree in his garden. Uh, let's go and ask him if we can have some. Good idea. Bye, Bye. Mrs Thompson. Bye, Mum. That should do it. I'll go and start the van, then. Give me a shout when you're ready. Ready, Ted? Ready. The lid. Hang on, Pat. Stop the van a minute, will you? What was that, Ted? Shall I give it a bit more power? Bat, turn it off! <laughs> Oi! What's the idea? Where did that come from? Sorry, Ted, I, I couldn't hear you with the engine on. Too much power, Bat. The ice cream's gone everywhere. I don't know, it's have got... Oh, wait. Using a dangerous machine close to a public highway. Obstructing an officer during his work. Throwing missiles at an officer of the law. It's a very serious... Mmm, strawberry. Mmm, uh, very serious. Uh, this uh, won't do. Uh, won't do at all. Mmm, tasty. Strawberry ice cream, PC Selby. Ted's made an ice cream machine for the picnic. Bat's helping me to get it running. I can see that. His van was a bit too powerful for the job. I can see that as well. We'll have to try something else. I know. PC Selby's bicycle. You can't use that. That's an official vehicle, that is. You wouldn't want the children to go without ice cream, would you? Oh, they're all looking forward to it. It's the picnic in a few hours. Hmm. Here you are, my dear. Cherry ice cream, eh? Mmm, marvellous idea. Thank you, Reverend Timms. See you later. Walnuts are delicious in ice cream. And highly nutritious, too. That's great. Thanks, Dr Gilbertson. Look, Mr Pringle gave me some toffees. Let's go and see what we can find in the cafe. Do you think the ice cream machine's ready yet? Blimey. Oh. Oh. This is hard work. <gasps> Why don't one of you two have a go? It's not getting cold at all. We need more power. It's never going to be done at this rate. And it's... Perfect ice cream weather. Just look at that sun. The sun, that's it. Ted, have you still got those solar panels? Oh, they're out the back. Well, solar panels make electricity from the sun, don't they? We could use them to power the ice cream maker. Good idea, Pat. I wish I'd thought of that myself. Phew. So do I. What have you found, Mira? Bananas and chocolate. Brilliant. Everyone can have a different flavour now. What about Jess? Maybe we could get Ted to make some ice cream for him as well. Wow. I wonder what flavour he'd like. Maybe banana. Don't be silly. Cats don't like bananas. How about jelly? I know what he would like. Come on. Meow. That should do it. Let's go and test it out. What do you want them for? It's a uh, surprise. Thanks, Mrs. Goggins. That's the last of the strawberries. Let's hope it works this time. How long does it take? About half an hour, I reckon. 
That'll give me just enough time to finish my deliveries. I'll give you a hand. What about the machine? Maybe PC Selby could be in charge. Well, I... It's cooler in here than outside on your bike. Um, I suppose I could keep an official eye on it. Uh, make sure no one steals the ice cream. <sighs> Everything in order. Maybe just a little rest. Forty winks. Mrs. Goggins. Cheerio, Mrs. Goggins. Finished. How are we doing for time? Grand. Ice cream should be ready when we get back. Mm. Scream! And next time it will be a parking ticket. I am. Oh no! Never mind. We can clear this up and start again. Let's get a move on then. It's not long till the picnic starts. We've got heaps of stuff. Yeah. We've got something for everyone. Meow. <laughs> That should definitely work this time. Now then, cream, sugar. Oh, no. What's wrong, Ted? I haven't got any more strawberries. What are we going to do? Don't worry, Mr Glenn. We've got loads of other ingredients. Like bananas. And cherries. And walnuts. By gum, I reckon you kids have just about saved the day. Right. Which flavour first? I like toffee myself. It's the only thing I really like. Mm. Banana and toffee, then. Let's do banana and toffee. Uh, banana and toffee first, please. Right you are. What's in here? No, Dad. That one's a surprise for someone yeah. very special. <laughs> Cherry flavoured. Delicious. Walnut and chocolate? Oh, Would you like to try some, Pat? Yeah. No, thank you, Jeff. I'm waiting for the special surprise flavour. Here you are, young man. Thanks. It's ready! <gasps> this is the one I wanted to taste. But, Dad! The special surprise one. <laughs> it's not meant for people, Dad. It's a special ice cream. The Jess. Sardine flavour. <laughs> <laughs> Hat. Just bought it, Pat. You need one in this wind. Good morning, Dorothy.
Dorothy. Oh, that's a lovely hat, Julia. Don't you think so, Mrs Goggins? Yes, very nice. Oh, you certainly need a hat in weather like this. Well, I must be off. Bye, Dorothy. I'd love a new hat. It's an unusual flower, Jess. Funny I haven't noticed it before. Meow. Meow. Hiya, Pat. Hello, Bill. Here you are. Thanks, Pat. Bye. Meow. Meow. Come on, Jess. Last night. Only a little bit, but I couldn't do all. You got to be quiet now. Mr. Pringle's got a letter. Morning, everyone. Now this should interest you. Two very rare butterflies have gone missing from Pencaster Zoo. Wow! And they've offered a reward of free passes into the zoo to anyone who can find them. Wow! Did you hear that? Wow! I like Pencaster Zoo. Here's a picture of the missing butterflies. As you can see, they're very big and colourful. Wow! You could look for them this afternoon if you like. Hooray! But remember, if you find them, be gentle, because butterflies are very delicate. <laughs> What do you think, Alf? Ah, lovely, dear. Yay! 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 Quiet! Everyone quiet! Are we going to look for the butterflies? Yeah! yeah. 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 What's that? Oh, butterfly net. It's too big. We'll fly off when they see that. You want one like mine? Follow me. <laughs> Be quiet. That's a pretty hat, Dorothy. Oh, thank you, Pat. It's funny, Jess, but I'm sure there's something familiar about that hat. Wow. <laughs> Uh, uh, uh. Uh. Oh, 
It's just a flower. Morning, Arthur. Morning, Pat. <coughs> Come and look at this, Arthur. There's a lovely flower I saw here earlier. Never seen one like it before. I found it this morning when I... Oh, it's gone. Meow. Oh, dear, that's a pity. It was lovely. Do you know, it was just like the decoration on Dorothy's hat. I hope she didn't go and pick it. You're not supposed to pick wildflowers. Oh, you got a new hat after all, did you? It's lovely. Such a pretty decoration. Oh, do you think so? And so many beautiful colours. No, only cherry coloured. Oh! Oh, hello, Arthur. Do you like my new art? Very nice. Um, <clears throat> you know you're not supposed to pick wildflowers, Dorothy, don't you? I haven't. What's that, then? Just a bunch of cherries. I don't know what you're talking about, Arthur. There they are! After them! Yeah. Quick, 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 come on, let's quick, go! Quick, quick! No, I quick, 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 them. quick, 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 Hey, Bill. Mr. Pringle said they're delicate. Yes. Give 
Give us net, Charlie. Oh, what the... Oh, 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 oh. Dorothy. Oh, Mrs. Thompson. Meow. Mom. <laughs> What's going on? Sorry, Dorothy. Just stand still for a moment. Look. They escaped from Pancaster Zoo, Mum. They're going to give free passes to anyone who catches them. Oh! Aren't they lovely? Uh, we need something to put them in. Oh, I've got just the thing. I bought some new storage boxes. Here we are. Thanks, Dorothy. We'll buy you another one. They need some holes so they can breathe. They were on your hat. We all thought it was a flower. I think they're like your bunch of cherries. So that's why Mrs Goggins said it had lots of colours. Oh. Well done, everyone. I'll take the butterflies back to the zoo now. And don't forget to ask for our free passes, Pat. I won't, Bill. <laughs> don't worry. Hope you've had a good time, you two. Time to go home now. I'm so sorry about your hat, Dorothy, dear. Oh, that's OK. I don't think it was really me, anyway. I like the old scarf. It's, um... Oh! My hat! Practical. <laughs> <laughs> Stop! My hat! Go back! Stop! Postman, postman, Is there a